Now we're going to consider the closed line integral around the curve C but inside the vector field P which only has an i hat direction. Now of course the, the line is going to be dr, the infinitesimal line element is dr. So del x i hat plus or dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz k hat. So we're going to discuss the closed line integral here. Okay, note by the way there's a small arrow on the actual uh, on, on the closed part of the integral which indicates its direction. In this case we are going anti-clockwise. So we're going to take p dot dr. But of course it is, p only has an i hat direction, dr has an i j k hat direction, so the dot product will only be in the i hat direction. So we get nothing, uh, no component from dy j hat or dz k hat. Our closed line integral going anti-clockwise simply becomes L dx. But of course, L is a function of two variables, namely x and y. And as a moment ago we said, we've broken the y component into two separate curves, y1 of x and y2 of x. So what we do is we actually rewrite this closed line integral as the sum of two integrals whose sum of course is a closed line. And we have x, we'll say L a function of x and y1 of x, and L a function of x and y2 of x. I hope that's pretty straightforward. It is extremely important to note the limits. Note that on the lower cur curve where we have L a function of x and y1, we start at a and we go to b. So we're on the lower curve down here, we start at a and we go to b. We'll see in a moment that on the top curve we will start at b and go to a. So on the top curve we start at b and go to a, and on the lower curve we start at a and we go to b. Now it's always useful to have integrals with the same limits because you can bring them together. So we note that we have a to b here, but we have b to a here. So if we negate the second integral, we can actually swap the limits. So we do something like this. And that's what I've done down here. So now we have two integrals, both of a function of x and they both have the same starting and end points. So what I've done here on the top of your screen is I've rewritten both of those integrals together. They have the common integral sign and the common variable dx and I've written them here as their difference. L a function of x and y1 minus L a function of x and y2. Now I will do something which should become clear in a moment, or the reason for which should become clear in a moment. I'm going to swap the order. So instead of having L a function of x and y1 minus L a function of x and y2, I'm going to swap them. And in, so, I'm, in doing so, I'm going to negate the integral. So we're going to have minus the integral from a to b of L a function of x and y2 minus L a function of x and y1. Why would we bother doing this? Well, as you'll see in a moment, because we're going to invoke the result of the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you would like to know more about the fundamental theorem of calculus, see my video number 29 in the section Vector Calculus for Electromagnetism. So I'm not really going to go through the theorem now, but if you look at, it, look at what we have up here, for long enough you'll realize that in actual fact we have the fundamental theorem and we can invoke it. More specifically, what we can say is we can, if we ignore all of this here, we have the result of the fundamental theorem, namely the difference between L of x and y2 and L of x and y1. This of course can be rewritten in another, another way using another piece of nomenclature where we say we have the single function L, a function of x and y, evaluated at the endpoints y1 and y2.